All right. I mean, I mean, you know, might be some buyers remorse out there. You know, we were 48,000. Now we're 40,000. What happened? Well, look, there's a huge run up in price, obviously, from mid-October until the actual approval. So we're sitting around $27,000 back in mid-October and almost doubled in price. And so obviously there's going to be some profit taking. I also think that people don't quite understand all of the uh, different things that are happening in the market in terms of grayscale, right? GBTC still has a 1.5% management fee. And so there's people who are dumping that. About $2 billion has flowed out, which is more than covering the inflows that have come in on the mm. ETF side. And so you just have a lot of sellers at the moment. But I do think that we're seeing so much interest in the ETFs. If everyone just waits and chills, the price will be just fine. You know, there's always been this sort of undercurrent that uh, on one hand, you want the Wall, Wall Street involved, but on the other hand, you really don't want Wall Street involved. You know what I mean? I think that there's going to be a pre-ETF era and a post-ETF era when it comes to Bitcoin's history. And what you have to remember is that when you get tons of Wall Street investors involved and you get lots of liquidity in the market, volatility will dampen. The good news is we probably won't have a lot of 80% drawdowns anymore, but the bad news may be you may not have those asymmetric thousand percent gains in a single year either. I, I saw something from uh, out of ARC and it says Bitcoin's hash rate is at an all time high. 50 exa hashes this month. Now, a lot of this, I don't know what the hell I'm saying, but the chart, I'm a chart guy. Look at that <laughs> damn chart. When I see a chart like this, I'm like, what is that? I like it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's a positive piece here, but explain to us why this is another reason maybe people want to be long Bitcoin. So when I ask somebody, hey, you know, what is the value that's backing that asset? A lot of people say there's nothing backing Bitcoin. Right. But actually, if you think about in the digital world, the single most valuable commodity in the world is computing power. And Bitcoin is backed by computing power. And that's what you're seeing here is how much computing power is behind the Bitcoin network, right? What is running this network? And so Bitcoin's network is the strongest computer network in the entire world. It's faster and it is stronger than all the supercomputers and all the really highly technical things. Bitcoin is a decentralized network with all this computing power. And so what does that mean? The more computing power that's pointed towards Bitcoin, the more secure it is. And the whole idea of Bitcoin is that it's outside the system. No one can hack it and no one's going to be able to change it. And so when you see that chart going up into the right, that means that Bitcoin is actually getting stronger. The more stronger the Bitcoin is, the more valuable people are. And that's the part of the real actual value proposition. Not just, hey, you know what, it's, it's anti-fiat currency, but that gives that puts some real meat on the fundamental bone. Yeah, if you think about what is the system behind it, right? right? There's actual people have gone, they've bought computers, they've plugged them in, they're consuming power, they're turning power into money. And the more power or the more computing power that's on that network, the stronger it is, the harder it is to hack. And so just like gold, right? The more that you can physically touch the gold, the more it's in your possession. Same thing here is the network is being protected by that computing power. Right. And so you want to see that continue to go up into the right for as much as it can. Before I let you go, uh, market's looking phenomenal. Stock market's looking phenomenal. We've had a big run in a lot of things. Commodities may be coming on. Are you feeling okay overall? Are you one of these people, though, that gets a little antsy when things feel too good? So I, I think it's interesting. The S&P hit an all-time high. We got over 5% interest rates. But what I would say is if you look at global liquidity, that's really the driver here. And we have seen global liquidity now is showing a number of different signs based on how you measure it that we are going to see much more money sloshing around in the global economy, regardless of what the Fed does. And I do think that that'll serve as a tailwind for the next couple of years. Welcome, Welcome to the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you're joining the Patreons. If you're not a part of the Patreons, make sure you're hitting the cash up. And we are pump on Bitcoin. Buyer's remorse. And we saw the mainstream media pump up the Bitcoin ETF, especially going towards the approval. But I talked about this earlier. We knew we were going to have a sell-off. And those who came in at the end, of course, they feel like they're holding the bag. But if they can hold tight, remember, Bitcoin and crypto is for the fourth industrial revolution. But in order for Bitcoin to hit these big numbers, because, you know, every time we've seen Bitcoin hit big numbers, it all came from the Fed liquidity. But this time, Bitcoin has to have a real use case. And if they attach it to the machines, of course, it definitely can hit a million. Now, we have stocks that were up today. S&P hitting new highs. Those who are part of the stock Patreon account know the real reason why. Even though we have yield rates moving up, the dollar fairly strong, stocks should be moving back. But that's the reason why you have to pay attention to all the moving pieces. Now we have Elon Musk say he's going to revolutionize payments. And the goal is that one-stop shop. 
that WeChat, he said the only thing he wanted to do is mimic WeChat. Social credit, social shopping, social working. And it's all going to lead inside the metaverse. And then we have Franklin Templeton speaking about the spot Bitcoin ETF, but more importantly, tokenization and blockchain. And we know they're using Stellar already, real use cases. And guys, every single month we're having more and more layoffs. Like I stated, 2024, more and more layoffs. 2025 is going to get even worse. And AI is going to be used as the excuse. Remember, AI doesn't need a lunch break, doesn't need insurance, not going to call out sick, no kids, and they can work all day. So these layoffs just keep coming, and that's the reason why we're hearing the drums are beating. Because we know the NWR, are the master magicians. They have to get you distracted in order to keep building the fourth industrial revolution. And we have the drums are beating in the Red Sea. And this is going to be perfect for the emerging markets to rise. Remember, 2024, they're going to flip the switch. 2025, the United States flipped the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. Yes, it takes about three to five years to build, but we can clearly see the wheels are in motion. So while the NWO builds, the sheep sleep. And we know by the time the sheep wake up, the fourth industrial revolution would be here. Where the robots, algorithms, and drones take the economy over, pay each other with crypto, and the sheep go inside the metaverse. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Next to use that term revolutionized, and this uh, term revolutionized payments, uh, on his platforms this year, he says, confirming rumors basically of a plot to replace PayPal. Uh, you're talking about Bitcoin. Musk has confirmed that SpaceX owns a bunch of Bitcoin and that he still owns a lot of Bitcoin rival Dogecoin, if you remember, a cryptocurrency that Musk once said he wanted to make the currency of the Earth. Uh, but now Musk has reiterated plans to compete with the likes of PayPal, Visa, even banks by offering products and services that will, quote, reshape how we connect, communicate, and transact. Musk was just granted a money transmitter license from the state of Utah last week and is the 15th U.S. state to okay his company plans to offer payments. It's fascinating, isn't it? No matter what you say, Elon Musk is the king of disruptors. Franklin Templeton, which has one and a half trillion dollars in assets under management, the 76-year-old firm was one of the roughly dozen to launch a spot Bitcoin ETF just last week after the SEC gave the go-ahead. Jenny, great to have you with us here on set. Thanks for having me. Um, let's start off with the Bitcoin ETF. I do want to, of course, get your take on the markets. But in terms of the Bitcoin ETF, we've seen massive inflows. That was expected in the early days. What do you expect as time moves on? And who are the incremental investors in this ETF, in your view? You know, it's funny. I, um, I'm known for saying that Bitcoin is the greatest distraction from one of the greatest disruptions in financial services, which is blockchain. So a lot of people took that as, I'm not a believer in Bitcoin. Uh, and yet... You know, it, launching this ETF, you can see, obviously, the demand that's out there uh, for Bitcoin. And I think there's a lot of reasons why that is. Uh, I think that, one, from a blockchain standpoint, the ability to pay, Bitcoin's going to be a key component of that. Uh, and the technology is going to open up a lot of really interesting types of investment opportunities. We actually uh, launched a tokenized uh, money market fund. We're the first... Uh, mutual fund to, or for, first traditional asset manager to actually launch a 40 act fund on a public blockchain on the stellar blockchain. So Bitcoin is just one of the suite of what we think are opportunities here. Uh, and, um, you know, one of the things that made me a believer is as I went around the world talking to people who would tell you, I, I had somebody who said, I keep 50% of my savings in Bitcoin because if I say the wrong thing in my country, I could have my assets confiscated. Uh, I remember talking to somebody in Israel who said, my parents and their parents had all of their assets confiscated. They keep a portion of it in Bitcoin. So there's a fear component to it um, that is considered almost a insurance or, or safety component. But I also think it's really important to fueling what is a, a next real opportunity in this blockchain world. Hey, John, so Macy's plans to cut about 2,300 jobs, 2,000 
350 jobs, specifically, spokesperson confirming this. That's about 3.5 percent of Macy's workforce. The Wall Street Journal first reported this news. Journal also reporting that Macy, Macy's plans to cut five stores. That is according to Wall Street Journal on those store closures, but they are officially cutting about 3.5 percent of their workforce, John. Let's talk about the Houthis first uh, as they attack shipping in the Red Sea and down at that uh, at that narrow area. I believe it's called Bob El Mandeb. Um, is there mm -hmm. any way that they can not only be deterred but neutralized? The Saudis fought them for years and were not with American weaponry, by the way, and were not able to do it. What makes us think that we can no, and I think, to your point, I mean, even statements from President Biden has said that uh, the attacks so far haven't deterred them. That was definitely our view, uh, that, you know, these attacks won't deter them. Uh, but doesn't mean the U.S. and U.K. will stop with it, because they're obviously trying to send a signal. The problem is, and, and something, you know, we've been talking about for a while, is that the Houthis are getting stronger, and I think that's where the risk is. And you've seen the disruptions they are causing uh, in the Red Sea in terms of transport. They have, however, come out today and said that they are only attacking or they only plan to attack U.S., U.K. and Israeli ships. But, of course, we've also seen one ship being hit which wasn't from one of these uh, countries. So, you know, you, you can't really control it sometimes given uh, just the nature of you know, location, etc. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity. And as an American, you know, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, oh, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. 
And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. The Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now, it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks, and you have a wonderful day. most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.